Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to go through a high level overview of the self publishing process. Don't worry, we dig much deeper into this in the upcoming lessons. However, I want you to understand the climate from beginning to end and what you can expect. As we walk through self-publishing and we get to each phase that we will review with you today, you are going to get a deep dive into that phase. So I'm going to brush at the surface and run through the overview. Be patient, we will get much deeper later. This is a 12 week timeline that I put together here. Some of you may go more quickly than this. Some of you may decide to take it more slowly. It's perfectly fine with whatever fits your goals. If you're trying to get through the 12 week author work group with me, then sticking to these timelines will help you get to a published book in 12 weeks. So let's go. First with the planning and editing, um, you're coming in typically into this phase with a manuscript complete. I don't talk about the writing process or the publishing or the getting it to a complete manuscript. However, in the course or in the earlier lessons, there are tips from Bobby Hinman, um, expectations for how you can clean up your manuscript and how to make sure it's ready for a professional edit. So watch those sessions if you haven't already. As we're walking through this process, you're going to want to be working with a professional editor. That is a critical point to getting your manuscript ready to move forward. Now, don't feel like you have to wait until it's perfect. We just want to make sure that it is ready for the editor. That's their job. They will help you get your story to be as perfect as it can be. They will help you hone any issues. That's what they'll do as part of the process. If you have a rhyming book, make sure that that editor is someone who specializes in rhyme. And don't forget, I have a referral list of editors that I've identified in the previous lesson that you can download and you can review or bring your own editor to the mix. You can find them on Upwork or in mm -hmm. author illustrator groups get references from other authors. So as you're working with your editor during these first few weeks, the goal will be to get to the professional edit to be finished in three weeks. And during that three week process, there's a number of other activities that you're going to be doing. Budgeting. So many times I hear, how much is it going to cost for me to publish my book? We go through all of that when we dig into the upcoming lesson around budgeting. So you want to track what your expectations are and follow that along and use the budgeting process to also help you prepare for the financing or funding of your project. For some, you'll be doing self-funding. For others, perhaps a Kickstarter a crowdfunding campaign can help you get the funding that you need. Okay, strategy and planning. This is the area where you are going to really be thinking and researching. The previous lessons we talk about running through a complete understanding of your niche, being able to talk about your why and identifying those perfect readers that are going to where your story is going to resonate. How do they talk about, about their needs? What kind of language do they use? These are all research topics and you're going to want to really dig deep into reading books in your niche, get understanding the bestsellers, really ensuring that you feel very comfortable in moving forward and that you have a good understanding of your perfect readers. As the professional edit continues to move forward, you'll work with your editor. You're going to also start preparing 
for a work with an illustrator. But I want to be very clear. Don't start illustrations until your professional edit is complete. Otherwise, you're going to have some backtracking and rework that's going to cost money, time, and a lot of frustration for you and for your illustrator. So we're not going to do that. We're going to avoid that at all cost. However, before your professional edit is complete, you can begin the process of finding an illustrator, maybe getting some samples. And I will talk more about that in an upcoming lesson. Okay. Now, developing your marketing plan, this we're going to get started in these first few weeks. It's part of taking the research that you've done and starting to turn that into a plan for the types of marketing activities that you are going to do with your book. And we're going to get much deeper into that in an upcoming lesson. So don't worry. But what you do need to know about marketing is that you see this line at the bottom of the screen. You have a huge beginning to end list of activities around marketing. It starts at the beginning, letting people know that you are publishing a book. Get the word out. Create your author page and invite your friends, family, and others to follow your page. Start sharing sneak peeks of what you're doing. Perhaps blog about it. Let people get excited with you and for you. You're going to want to practice telling your story. Maybe start practicing getting comfortable on video because that is such a powerful marketing tool, going live, doing read alouds, and being able to practice so that as you move forward and start doing this more, you will have the background and you'll have the practice needed to be successful with that. So don't skip these things. Your family, friends, followers are going to want to know and to, going to want to help you. They're going to want to share things. So let them and let other people join your journey. Follow other authors. Help them. If they're putting a launch team together and they're at the end of their process, go ahead and get started with join their launch team. See what it's like because you're going to need, need to do it. So it's really about just getting an information and an, a really good understanding about your niche, what you're going to be going through. Really immerse yourself in these first few weeks. So as you're finishing or getting to the end of this three-week period, you're going to have a completed manuscript. At that point, you have the option of moving forward and getting the copyright done on your words. I do recommend that so that you don't have to worry about, am I protected? You know, it's better to have that peace of mind and get your work copyrighted at that point. And we'll talk more about that as we get into it. But let's talk a little bit about taking that work and turning it into something that you can share with your illustrator. We're going to talk in more detail about an illustration brief and what that really is. I'll share samples in the lessons upcoming, but that will take the words and put illustration notes to it. For example, when I first started my book, my very first book, it was based on my dog, my family. And so I provided reference images for my dog and the family. And if I had something specific in my mind, then I wanted to also go through and prepare some reference images on the setting. It's also a great idea to document information about your characters. So for example, if your character is a child, how old is the child? What color hair? What color eyes? Do you have a reference picture? 
or an image. You can easily go to Google and you can search anything and then add the word cartoon and you will see a bunch of different pictures come up. You will be able to provide at least some guidance around what type of things that you're thinking of. You can also get a, an idea of different styles that you like. Go search illustrators portfolios. Take a look at the styles you like, the color schemes you like. Help to pull information together that's going to help your illustrator understand and be successful. So we take all this information and we put it into an illustration brief and we walk through that. You can take that and also lay out your book in a, a book dummy, which is really just a book mock-up so that you can get your page turns moving, okay? So this is for you, it's for your illustrator, but start to see and make decisions about page turns. Now, if you're working with an editor that provides that service for you and provides you with some suggested page breaks and illustration notes, that is a huge benefit. So ask them if they will be providing you that service. And you could take their notes and their suggestions and you can modify that so that it becomes what you want your illustrations to be. So as you're getting through this, you're also going to pull the illustrator contract together. You don't want to be, you know, working on a contract that doesn't protect you, the author. The referrals that I have put into my illustrator list are all people that are tried and true in our author work group or that I have worked with myself, they will agree to the template, the contract template that I provide to you. That contract template will give you the rights and the protection that you need. It gives you the copyright to the images and there's no royalties or anything like that. It's a work for hire. So you know, having that contract template and preparing that early on in the process will also help you. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do when you first start with illustrations is get some samples. I recommend a few samples. I'm going to get into much more detail about selecting an illustrator and my suggestions around samples in a future lesson, but you're going to want to see what the illustrator can do. So think about a scene, a character that's important to you. And my recommendation is to get an illustrator to provide you with a sample on what you are looking for before you decide to commit to that illustrator and always pay for the work. The illustrators on my list have agreed to a $50 sample fee for a full page color sample. So take advantage of that. And once you go through the selection process, you've got your illustrator. Now you're going to start working through storyboarding, sketching, and colored illustrations. So it's a process where you start very loose and, you know, very rough sketches within the storyboard. And a storyboard just takes you through all the flow of your book. It's very high level and I will show you, we'll dive deeper into what that looks like. But just realize that at the beginning, you have a lot of opportunity to make changes. When you're in storyboard or you're in sketching, it's going to be easy for the illustrator to make changes. Once things start moving into coloring, when you have approved those sketches, the changes have to stop. Otherwise, you are going to find yourself with lots of rework and reworking at the coloring stage is much more difficult and much more costly. It's going to add more cost to your project. So be smart, 
and make sure things are locked down in the early stages and then you can get through as efficiently as possible with your illustrations. More tips, more detail on illustrations coming in a future lesson. Next, as we are working through, so here we've got the couple weeks, we've got sketches complete, and then, you know, four weeks, six weeks, you know, three months, it really is going to depend on the level of detail for your illustrations, the style you choose. So if you really want to be finished within the 12 weeks, then there are some great tips that can help you reduce complexity. And we're gonna go through that when we talk about illustrations. Just remember that this timeline is based on simple illustrations, not too many characters, still beautiful. There are difference between an illustration that does a great job, is beautiful and tells your story versus one that is just an amazing detailed work of art, right? If those are the types of illustrations that you are going for for your book, there's nothing wrong with that. There is definitely a market for it, but it's not going to be done in the, you know, six weeks or so where you've got the illustrations here, okay? So you'll need to modify your timeline based on the level of effort for your illustrations. During this process of illustrations, you're also going to go through cover design and you're gonna start what I refer to as a press kit. You may have also heard it referred to as a media kit. So what this will do, again, this is part of the marketing efforts. It is going to help you to get a little more about you. It's going to force you to put information about you, the author, your story, differentiators about your book, what makes it special. You can add some of the illustrations, your cover, your identifiers, and put something together that you can share as you are talking with media, asking for press coverage, even provide to influencers. Part of the media kit even has Q&A where you can have question and answer, kind of like simulating an interview. And that way, the media that is reading or the podcaster or blogger that needs information about you in order to write about you or to give you that press or determine if you're the right fit, they will have a good sense of the types of information that you want to share in an interview. So you're going to create that. It's going to give you a huge leg up with getting press for your book and for you. So we're going to go into that in much more detail. And so I'm not going to go too deep in that now, but I want you to know that's part of what's going to be happening while your illustrator is off working on your illustrations. You are going to immerse yourself in publicity kit, in continuing to put your content marketing together really developing in much more detail what your marketing plan is going to be, and even starting launch preparations. So you're going to want to prepare and perhaps build a launch team. Start moving forward with getting your ISBNs, your Library of Congress control number, your CIP block. These are all things that you must purchase and they all just go on your copyright page. So we're going to walk you through every step of that, what you need to buy, what you need to file. You'll know all of the costs ahead of time and the expectation as we move forward through the process. Also, we're going to be walking through a decision about whether you're going to use print on demand, whether you're going to print your books with an offset printer. 
you're going to think about, you know, do you want to do pre-orders and make that part of what you're doing with your launch team. You're going to be contacting influencers and going through also creation of some of the supplemental pages that you need while your illustrator is working on all of these things and you feel like, oh no, what do I do? Believe me, we have lots of activities, all pretty much just getting you closer to launch, launch preparations, marketing preparations. The supplemental pages you'll be working on are things like about the author and illustrator, maybe a dedication page or a page at the end that provides an offer that drives people to your website to get something special. For example, in my books, I have a free download of my ebook. I also have coloring pages. Sometimes I'll put an offer to go and download the coloring book for a specific ebook or print book that they've just purchased. So by doing that, I get people to my website. I get them to give me an email address and then I can market to these people and turn my customers into fans and friends and get to know them and provide them with value so that I can continue to build and work with them so that when other new books are created, they're in my ecosystem. They're not someone who has just purchased something off of Amazon that I have no connection to. There's a lot that goes into this, and I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. It can be a daunting task to self-publish a book. And that's why I created this group. That's why I walk you through every part of it. And we will go through it all together. There's going to be a lot more detail coming on exactly what we do and your assignments will take you through each one of these steps that I'm talking about. Now we're getting to the end of illustration and we're moving to the design phase. So I wanna talk a little bit about graphic design. We have an amazing team that I work with and I highly recommend. We have about five graphic designers led by Prey Saffler. And this would be an amazing opportunity for you to get your graphic design done at a very reasonable price. That doesn't mean that you cannot go through and pull one of the other graphic designers that I have on my list. There's plenty of great people out there. So you can also still work with Upwork or go to Readsy go to your author work groups and you'll find other graphic designers. What do they do? They're the ones that are going to help you take your words and the illustrations and they're going to put those together in a beautiful package. They bring the typography, they do the beautiful layout for you. And at the end of all that, the output is what you're gonna use to upload to Amazon or upload to Ingram Spark or send to your offset printer. So the output files that they create and you know they're experts, they do this regularly, are going to give you the very high quality so that your book does not look self-published. Okay. I know a lot of you may be tempted to try to save money in this area with doing your own cover or doing your own layout. But caution, this is not an area you wanna skimp on, especially for your first book, okay? So you'll be working with the designer and whoever you choose for your designer is going to need your manuscript delivered to them. They're going to need the layout from your illustrator. In other words, the finished illustrations with the layers intact so that if needed, they can move things around a little bit. So by getting them those source illustrations, that will help them create a better layout for you. And 
the other part of working with a designer is you need to make sure that they have the other things like all of your identifiers, your supplemental pages, any type of dedication, things that you want added. And they will work with you to get through that process. It's usually a week or so. You need to get on, on their radar earlier than that so that they know exactly when your book is coming. The graphic designer can also work with your illustrator so that in the end, when all is done, there's not a lot that needs to happen or needs to be tweaked in order to get that layout ready to go. So engaging with them early and then having everything prepared will go a long way in making sure that that process can be as efficient as possible. Now, during the final push, as you're working with design and publishing of the book, there's going to be the book design and formatting, as I just mentioned. Then when you're loading things up to Amazon or sending things out, you're going to want to make sure you have good keywords, categories selected. And there's a process of setting up your Ingram Spark and Amazon accounts. Also, if you're going to be ordering print books, different printers have, you know, slightly different specifications. So you'll want to make sure ahead of time that you've selected your printer and that you've gotten that spec to your graphic designer so that they can make sure to have exactly what the printer needs. So there's not a lot of back and forth or any issues. Publicity and marketing in this last final few weeks is really important. You're going to spend a lot of time going through and, you know, getting those blog tours or, you know, get on podcasts, get on radio shows, get your name out there and start scheduling things so that when your book is going live, you're going to be moving forward and you've got all of your other supporting efforts around marketing coming together as your book is out there for pre-order, is ready to order, or has officially launched and is now available. So some of it is quite the art form to just get all of this to come together. And we're going to walk you through that process. So no worries, but I want you to understand that that final push, you're going to need to make yourself available for marketing. And for those of you who are not really good at marketing, practice now at the beginning, get better, get comfortable on video, reach out for influencers and start building relationships and following people and, you know, making those connections because you're going to need them at the end of this process. And it's very difficult, you know, to do it at the 11th hour. So if you want a successful launch, you are going to need to step out of your comfort zone and learn to market your book. You can get others to help you, but you really need to become a good marketer. Just be yourself. People are going to love you. They're going to love your story. And I don't want you to become anybody that, you know, you're not. Be yourself, but find a way to allow your authentic self to market your book, how in whatever form that looks like. Okay. At the end of this whole process, when the launch is complete, the fanfare is going, you perhaps have book signings. You, you know, file your final copyright, including the illustrations that are now complete. And it's all about sales and marketing and moving things forward. So even though you're at the end of your publishing journey, you're now at the beginning of continuing with sales and marketing because it's important that you have a plan and continue to work it. Otherwise, you're going to do really well. And then after launch, it's just going to start going down, down, down. We don't want that. We want things to continue to sell. We want you to continue to be excited and continue to write more and just really 
immerse yourself in the self-publishing world, especially if this is something that you want to supplement income or to make you know, a career out of, you're going to need to continue to move and learn and grow. And we have plenty more opportunities and training that goes from my book is published. Now, what do I do? So no worries. We've got you there as well. So this has been a lot of information and I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback post in the group. If you've got questions or you have some ideas or issues that you want to kind of get a better handle on, you can also drop into my office hours and I am glad to dig into any of these topics, but don't worry, we are going to get much deeper. I don't expect you to have a full understanding of the ins and outs of all of this at this early phase. Okay, so I look forward to working with you and to go through this process together and just take comfort in knowing that you're not alone. We're doing this together with a group of other people that are going through the same thing as you are. You're going to be there to support each other and I'm going to be here to walk you through every step of the journey. Have a wonderful day.